Hey there, it's Thursday night. For those of the of people that are Christian, of the Christian belief, this is Monday, Thursday. This is the day of the Last Supper. This is where Judas accepts 20 pieces of silver from the Romans to, he makes a deal that after dinner they're going to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And the Romans said, well, how will I know? Which Jesus, who Jesus is, he says, well, I'll give him a peck on the cheek, you know, because we all love him so much. And the Romans thought, okay. So they were praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Judas went up and kissed Christ on the forehead. And the guards came in and took him away. Now, tomorrow is Good Friday. And my mom always said it always rains about 3 in the afternoon on Good Friday because that's when Jesus died. They make him carry a cross through town. Any of the criminals that were going to get crucified is a giant wooden cross and they'd have to drag it through the town to the little hillside where they put the cross up. Actually, they nailed the person tied the person to the cross and then erected it and then the hot sun and the birds pecking at them and you know if they were poked at which Jesus was poked at with a spear five different places and uh, he dies and then he's taken down put in a special cloth and anointed with oils and stuff which was a a traditional way to bury someone, not a criminal, but up to up to bury someone, and they put him in a tomb with this great big rock in front of it to keep grave robbers out, you know, keep people out. And on Easter is the day when they go to check on the body after three days, and the stones rolled away, and the body's gone. And the cloth is neatly folded, but the body's gone. Apparently, Jesus ascended back into heaven, and he meets up with someone on a path as a glowing angel-type person. That's like all the, the Christian-type stuff that I know. Because I was raised Lutheran, and you hear this every year when you're a little kid in Sunday school and church. Now, I don't know about some of the other religions. I know Muhammad was, uh, like, related somehow, third cousin or something. Or so many generations, you know, like so many cousins once removed or whatever. You know, I have relatives like that, too. I get notified from twenty, me and 23 or whatever. Uh, you have some guy in Czech Republic is keeping track of my great, great grandmother Anna Bovi Holich and uh, I didn't know that guy wasn't related to me the one that's keeping all these records over there I don't really know Czech I know just a few words otherwise I could try to get a hold of him I mean I can always use translator but uh, here I'm going off the subject this is Easter weekend Holy Week as many Lent is over, uh, it ended Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, yesterday. And uh, we are preparing for Easter brunch. Ashley's been busy cleaning and buying stuff to make. We're going to have croissants. We're going to have ham and cheese and vegetables and fruits. And her uncle Keith is coming in from Arizona or wherever. He, I don't know where he lives. Arizona, I think. And uh, I had have things to make a little scavenger hunt, which I'll show you probably tomorrow vlog. Little things I'll wrap up and then you give a clue from one gift to the next. So they have to figure out the clue and then figure out where that is. Like a clue could be, uh, baby, I'm cool. and It's cool in here. I really dig it, man. I'm right there. I'm cool as ice. Well, it's the ice freezer part of the freezer. You know, that's kind of a 
loose clue. I'm going to do that for Ash, Brian, her sister and brother. Now Uncle Keith's coming in and I didn't know that and I basically made him a sign. It's a two-sided sign with a cute little thing on each side. One, the one side says it's hard being indecisive. No, no. It's hard doing nothing because no one knows when you're done. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Spencer and I were trying to fill in the holes that the dogs dug. And I put some Irish Spring soap pieces in there and he took them all out. Trying to put the soap bar back together. And uh, we're trying to fill in the holes so the dogs won't dig anymore. Brian's ordered a dog training collar. It has a sound that the dog doesn't like. And I think you can get them that have a shock, a very mild one or adjustable or whatever. Usually the training collars have like a little sound that the dogs learn that that means if they keep it up that they're going to get a little shock. So he's going to try that. Spencer's been a real good kid. And uh, he wanted me to go with him when Ash went to In-N-Out Burger and we picked up their supper. I had something else. But he wanted me to go along, so I did. And uh, while Ash was eating, I was holding Sebastian. And he can open his eyes a whole lot, and he tries to hold his head up now. He's two months old. Nine pounds, three ounces. That's how much Brian was when he was born. Huh. But uh, he's quiet. He's a lot different than Spencer. Well, it may change. I don't know. But he looks like a little old man. He looks like my grandpa, my paternal grandfather. <laughs> you know, how they get this little wan face and sparse hair. He looks like my grandpa. My grandpa's name was Victor Hugo Holich. So I'll call him Hugo. <laughs> he said he hated that name because his mother named him after the author, Victor Hugo, who wrote Les Miserables. Um, yeah. How long have I blithered? A long time. Ah, sorry about that. Seven, almost eight minutes. Well, tomorrow I intend on cleaning everything up. Tomorrow the trash guys come. I mowed the grass yesterday. And it filled up the the grass bin <laughs> a lot. And uh, Spencer was helping me out in the yard. And I have some vegetables from the local nursery we're going to try to grow so that he can see something grow. I have strawberries, which have little berries on them, and he can see that. So he, he can see, he knows what that is. Then I have corn, corn on the cob corn. They're about this tall. They're going to be tall. So he doesn't really understand what corn on the cob is, because the only corn he's had is just like already off the cob. So that'll be fun. Uh, I have a tomato plant. So the old tomato plant seems to be still alive. So I'm going to have more tomatoes this year, I guess. So, And then the la I have a watermelon plant. Don't know where I'm going to put that. The other side of the yard where there's a little shade would be better for watermelon because it, it kind of spreads out on the ground and everything. I don't know. We'll see. And then the last one I have is a zucchini. And Spencer goes, what's this? And I said, a zucchini? And he thinks that's the funniest sounding word. Zucchini! <laughs> so, uh, I'm in between clothing and pajamas, if you can't guess. <laughs> uh, I stopped by the German market and got some more bear claws. They were just loaded full of baked goods today. I guess they expect people to come in tomorrow and Saturday and load up for their company on Easter. I have a canned ham or 
It's it comes in a can with like a pop top. It's a little one, about the size of a uh, uh, grapefruit. And I'm sure it's like spam. It's pieces and crap pressed together. I don't know if I'll make that or not. I might for myself that and mashed potatoes. But I had I bought some bratwurst, and I. Cut, put them into little pieces and fried them up and then they're in the freezer now so all I have to do is pull out the, as many as I want and then heat them up and eat them up I'll be making cabbage to go with it cabbage is really pretty good actually <laughs> if you get a good cabbage it's really good plain and then I'll be making dumplings egg dumplings to go with it but tomorrow I have the last serving of chili to eat. So Saturday, I don't know what I'll be making Saturday. Probably I also made a little extra fettuccine, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, fettuccine carbonara. And I made a little too much. So I put some in a dish that can I can eat tomorrow for lunch or something. <sighs> One more serving of waffles. I've got bear claws, I've got cornmeal mush, I've, I've, my larder is full. <laughs> my brother said, what are you, 18th century England larder? Don't you call it a pantry? No, I call it a larder. I do have lard, but it's in the refrigerator, so it doesn't get, uh, yucky. <laughs> oh, Shirley, you have just blithered on and on. Yeah, I'm kind of tired. I was working on Spirit Sign for Uncle Keith, and what else? I just have to work on the, the rest of the scavenger hunt, vacuum, and wash the carpet tomorrow, and just put stuff away. Like the suitcase, I haven't put it away yet. It's empty, but I haven't put it away. Yep. Well, that's a hole in the ground. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I really do want to do the pomegranate information, which I probably will do tomorrow. Hmm. <laughs> Upward and onward.